Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. I'm glad to see all the friendly faces here. We have a few that uh, hadn't seen for a little while, so uh, I'm glad that uh, some of you are back again. Um, I have a couple of announcements to make uh, this morning. We're going to be uh, we're going to be having some uh, special uh, music today, so I'd like to go ahead and announce those up front so that we know. Um, Jared Rivera, is, is he in the auditorium? Maybe, maybe he's, oh, he's, a, he's at the back. So he's gonna be playing the piano during uh, offering and, and uh, children's story. And then Gail is going to be doing some special music for us also today. So those are two of the announcements that I'd like to throw out there. Um, I also had a flyer that I don't know what I did with now. Jerry, do you have another flyer? Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can find it and I'll have a, uh, a PS on the announcement. So I'll, I'll go back and see where I laid it down. Um, and then I think, uh, Diane, did you have an announcement that you also wanted to make? Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to see if I can find the flyer. Good morning. Good morning. How many of all of you, and it, not maybe because I was never a science person, but how many of you guys really love science? We are super excited that we are having our first first ever science fair at the school. We are super excited. The kids are just on fire. They have been doing their experiments, and I don't know all the logistics words, and I'm not seeing one of the upper grade teachers here, but they have um, been doing their write-ups. I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe if I, one of the kids can tell me what all the words are. But they're super excited about having this science fair. Now, this is what we need from you guys. We're still looking for a couple of judges. How many of you guys have ever wanted to judge a science fair? That is super cool. We actually have a rubrics that you follow. So you don't even have to decide, okay, am I doing this? Are they doing this? The paper will tell you everything, everything that you need to do to judge that particular science project. We're looking for that, but the may be a problem, may not be. It's March 1st, it's in the morning. It's from, it's on a Friday. Um, it starts at 9.45 in the morning till about noon, depending on how fast we can get through all of the, the science projects. Um, and then we'll come together and calculate all of the results because on March 2nd, we would like to invite you guys, it's a Saturday night over to the school, we're gonna have our very first science fair night. And what we're going to do is all of the kiddos are going to have all of their projects laid out in the, inside the gym. Each classroom is responsible for setting up some sort of STEM project. We have really embraced STEM at the school this year. We are getting a lot of science projects and math projects and art, so I guess that would be STEAM, um, art projects in that uh, we have ordered for the kids to learn these new things with. So all the projects are going to be set up, and then we will announce the, the winners, you know, different levels of winner. We're going to be selling food, so come hungry, and we'll have that <clears throat> more toward, we're putting it toward our budget to get a few things that we still need by the end of the year. And so the first thing is, if you're willing to be a judge, or just willing to come out and look at the science projects with us, March 1st, which is Friday, uh, during the day from 9.45 to noon. Um, if you come, I promise I'll feed you. <laughs> we have pizza, we'll, we'll feed you. Um, March 2nd, which is Saturday night, it's gonna start at 5.30. We're going to start with Vespers and just kind of have a small worship. We believe we're getting a fireman to come and possibly set his coat on fire. We'll see. We're still working that logistics out. Uh, 5.30 to 8.30, we're going to just kind of run through the night. Each class will present some of their projects. We'll announce the winners. You guys eat dinner with us. Have a good time. 
And if you still have any energy left, help us to break it down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we've got food, so come on out and join us. We're really excited about the new things that are happening at the school on levels that these kids have not experienced before. Because this year is science, next year we're going to hit the social studies fair. Never done that either, so we're excited. Thank you. Okay, the, uh, the announcement that Jerry wanted me to make is Abundant Life Ministry, Transforming Health and Lives, is going to be held at Albuquerque Heights SDA Church. It's on Wyoming Boulevard, 4920. It's going to be held on February 23rd, 6 o'clock, February 24th, 11 and 3 p.m., and February 25th at 10 a.m., and it's going to be fun, engaging, hands-on workshop. They're going to be doing hydrotherapy, chair massage, plant-based cooking, natural remedies, communities, and building strategies. And I believe the guest speaker's name is David Nicodemus. So uh, if, if any of those things uh, uh, sound like you would like to participate, again, February 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and you can either get with Jerry or myself, and we'll give you the times again if you need it. So um, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask the prayer uh, praise team to come up, and let's do, let's do uh, uh, opening music. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Today we have um, some visitors. So this is my mom's side of the family, her older brother, Andy, and his youngest daughter, Sophia. And my grandma is up here singing with us. So that's exciting. But yeah, we hope you enjoy our music today. Um, our first song will be Because He Lives. Please sing along. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love.
Our next song will be Soon and Very Soon. Oh, my God. 
you may be seated. Um, our children's story will be um, told by Taylor. Um, so if you're a little kid and you want to come up for children's story. Oh, it's going to be Tyler. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, go ahead and grab a cup in the back and bring it up. I uh, forgot to mention prayer cards. So uh, if you would have a prayer phrase, please fill this out. And uh, it, this goes into the offering plate right after children's story. So my apologies for overlooking this. It's still a new uh, procedure that we're doing. So uh, uh, fill this out during children's story if you could and place it in the offering plate. patient you older kiddos Henry and Levi are they're not shy <laughs> happy that's right it, it's for a good cause so they're not shy to push for it all right well happy Sabbath boys and girls thank you for being here today are you guys excited about being here today oh man you guys are not as excited as me I I am so excited because of all this warm weather outside. Whenever you can hear the, the older kids in the crowd, it's hard to get through winter sometimes when you're just anxious to get outside into some warm weather. <laughs> what are some of the things that you guys like to do when the sun comes out? Play with my dog. Oh, that's great. Play with your dog. Any other things? Well, when I was your age and a little bit older, whenever the sun was out, I liked to go outside and ride my four-wheeler. I had a small red four-wheeler. Do any of you have a four-wheeler or maybe a, a one of those electric cars or had a friend who would let you ride around on one of their electric cars, maybe? Uh, an elephant? Woo! <laughs> you had more fun than I did when the sun came out, but. Well, when I was a little bit older than you, I had a small red four-wheeler. And I was outside riding my four-wheeler one time. And being honest, I wasn't really paying attention to where I was going, because I was looking to the side. Right at the last second, I looked up, and I almost slammed right into the house. I slammed on the brakes, slid up to the wall, stopped about two feet away from the house. My heart was pounding. Have you ever done something that was a little dangerous and then your heart was just pounding? No. Oh my, you're more brave than me. Well, the thing about doing things that are kind of exciting and a little scary is sometimes we want to do that on purpose. And so I thought at that moment, maybe I could do that again. I could turn around, drive towards the house, and then hit the brakes, and come sliding up again. So I turned around, drove around, hit the gas, came driving back, slammed on my brakes, and I stopped about a foot away from the house this time. 
My heart was pounding again. Kind of exciting. I thought, I'm going to do it one more time. And this is a lesson to learn. When you tell yourself, I'm going to do something one more time, it doesn't always go well. I turned around and I hit the gas and I went as fast as I could towards the house. <clears throat> Slammed on my brakes. But what do you think happened? I hit the gas way too hard and I hit the brake way too late. <clears throat> Came sliding up and I slammed right into the house. And I made a wall, I mean a hole in the wall about like this. Well, now the excitement had turned to fear. Ooh, my heart was really pounding now, and I thought, what am I going to do? I need to fix it. So I went into the garage, and I found some duct tape, and I found <laughs> some cardboard, and I came outside, and I put that cardboard over that hole, and I put two big pieces of duct tape, right this way and this way. And I thought to myself, now it's fixed. I won't have to tell anyone and get in trouble and I can stop feeling bad and I can just go back to having fun. And you know what? It worked. I put the cardboard on there, I taped it, and I went inside and started having fun again and I forgot all about it. Well, two hours later when my dad came home and I heard him say, Tyler Paul, come outside. Instantly, it came flooding back to me, and I remembered what I had done. As I'm walking out towards my dad, tears are welling up in my eyes as I get closer and closer, and I start trying to tell him, well, Dad, it was an accident the first time, and, and then it was kind of fun, and I, and, I, I, and I just start crying, and I say, I'm sorry. Well, my dad was grumpy, but he was nice. And he said, son, sometimes we make mistakes, Sometimes they're accidents, and sometimes we just make poor choices. But I'm more disappointed that you didn't tell me so we could fix it together. So that next Sunday, we fixed that hole in the wall the right way, with chicken wire and with, and with some stucco, and we did it right. We didn't use duct tape this time. <laughs> but I want to remind you, in life, sometimes we have accidents, but other times, we just make poor choices. And sometimes those poor choices are kind of exciting at first. But you have to remember that poor choices always end up leading us to feel bad in the end. So even if it's exciting at the beginning, it will make us feel very bad at the end. But I just want to remind you that if you ever make a mistake, always be honest with yourself, honest with your mommies and daddies, and especially with Jesus. They will forgive you, but they'll also help you fix things the right way, not with duct tape. <laughs> now, let's have a word of prayer. Does anybody want to volunteer? Oh, wonderful. This is great. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for all us. Thank you for the day. Thank you that we cannot get hurt. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, boys and girls, for coming. And I appreciate it. Go and have a wonderful Sabbath. And for everybody in the crowd who's a little bit older, I just want to take a moment and say thank you for all your patience with these kiddos. Now that I have one, I appreciate that story of Jesus letting the little ones come and sit on his lap now a lot more than I used to. Thank you very much and happy Sabbath.
Amen. I'm standing up here thinking, is it really fair that one family can have so much musical talent? <laughs> no, no. We were cheated. Now it's time for our uh, pies and offerings. Today's offering is dedicated for the Texaco Ministries. I believe the loose offerings are still for our church budget. If you want to direct your offerings to any specific ministry or to the fellowship hall, please use the envelopes and, and designate where you would like your offerings to go. Uh, with that, I'd like to have the deacons stand and we'll have a word of prayer. Father God, we know that you have given us everything, everything material, everything spiritual, everything necessary for this life and for our next life. Now is our, the time for us to give back a portion that you have blessed us with. We pray that we will do it with an open heart and a giving spirit and Thank you for loving us as much as you have. In Jesus' name, amen.
emotion I feel discouraged and why should the shadows come why must my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me yes his eyes on the sparrow and I know me and I sing because I'm happy yes I sing because I'm free for his eyes on the sparrow
How many of you want spring to come today? Sit next to Gail. <laughs> she is a ray of sunshine inside and out. I just truly really get a blessing every time I hear her sing. Thank you, Gail. Okay, I'm gonna, if anybody has a prayer card you're still working on, just hold them up and the deacons and deaconesses will pick them up. I'm gonna zip through these pretty fast. Um, our first one, <clears throat> excuse me, is from Carol. My hairdresser, Liz, has been in the hospital for uh, two weeks. So definitely we'll pray for uh, Liz. Lydia, she wants to pray for Lydia for health concerns. And her third one is her friend Betty that uh, just, for just the right job. So yes, we will pray for all of your prayer requests. Carol, oh, and she said reserved for the prayer team a little hard. Thank you, thank you, Carol. Um, Ruth Rivera would like to, um, she, I happily praise the Lord for his great blessings, for having my three children with me. Oh, that's the awesome part. And for us welcoming them here. So we certainly uh, thank you that your family was here, Ruth. Uh, Nora has three of them. She would like to pray for Abby, Amanda, James, Megan, Augie, Mitchell, and Brandon. Lord, please bring them back to your, your home, your, to your fold. Nora, we definitely will pray for your, your friends and family. Uh, she would also like for us to pray for her friend. Her father just died. Um, we're asking to give her peace. Uh, we're also, she, Nora would like for us to pray for her students. Keep them safe and help them to see Jesus in me. Got it, Nora. Um, Andy would like to pray for Orcas Christian School and all of our children. So yes, definitely, we have children everywhere. Uh, but boy would like to praise that her back is much better and much better and back to normal. Thank you for the prayer group and everyone who's prayed for her. Yes, it's hard to see one of our, our colleagues down, so good job, oh boy. Um, this one doesn't have a name, but they would like to pray for Roberta, just lost her mother. People in Palestine to stop the genocide. They need food, water, medicine, and mercy. They would also like to pray for Levita Mission and the Navajo Nation and all of the Native American tribes who have a, access to drinking water. We would also like for to pray for Caleb to find peace, Noah to find the right job, Micah to get well, and Danny to find Jesus. Okay. May God provide healing to everyone suffering the long effects of COVID, to those struggling with things others may not see or understand. Definitely, we will put that in there. Um, this one is also anonymous. Please, oh, they have a praise. My health, my grandchildren, and my children. Praise for my new job closer for, to home. Um, this one's from uh, Marley. Pray for my friend Rome so that him and his family recover from their loss. Yes, definitely. Um, I looked online. I'd like to say a big hi back to Lolly. Got Nina's. I think, I'm sorry if I missed your name, Lolly. She's sending us hello from California. So right back at you, all. Lolly. Thank you for joining us all the way in New Mexico. Um, I think that's everything. If anybody else is working on one, um, if not, then we will pray, and if you guys bow your heads and pray with me, we will definitely lift these prayers up to God. Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful, sunshiny day. Lord, we thank you for the four seasons that you give us here in New Mexico, sometimes in the same day, and we just thank you for that. Lord, we ask that you be with our hearts and our minds as we get prepared for your service today. We ask that you be with Pastor Mike and give him the words and the peace and the just the joy to bring us his message. Lord, we want to lift up all these prayer requests. Lord, we have already laid them at your feet. You know what they are before I even read them. Lord, we ask that you be with the, the prayer requests, the praises, and Lord, just the concerns on our hearts. Lord, we ask that you be with the prayer group, that we stay diligent and we stay vigilant on praying for these cards as well as any others make, that come in during the week. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Diane. Uh, during her prayer, she said that I would have joy delivering this message. We'll find out. I also thought that Rivera's, they did so good in the music and then they left. So 
It must have seen the title of our message today. <laughs> but anyway, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our church. If you're a guest, thank you for worshiping with us. I'm sorry that there's no fellowship meal today, but we hope that you'll feel the hospitality of this church. Nonetheless, welcome to our online audience. And then, of course, those of you who are here in the flesh today. Today, we're going to talk about the topic of hell. Okay? Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and go do our quiz. Um, last week, Dan Dawson and his wife, Gita, made a presentation just for us. And so I'm just going to ask you two questions, right? Actually, maybe three, okay? Which country did Dan talk about last week? Anyone want to take a shot at it? All right. If you said India, you are not correct. All right. If you said United States, you are incorrect. If you said Nepal, you were paying attention. So thank you, Dan, for giving us that message. All right. True or false, Nepal is open to Seventh-day Adventists. True, right? And then he, he talked about the work that's being done. He was there, of course. And then I actually don't remember, but maybe you got to talk about it or not. But Adra plays a big role in the country of Nepal as well. And then this one is a bonus question. How many years has Dan and Gita been married? Who says less than 30? Who says more than 30? All right, who says more than 40? Who says less than 40? Who says more than 50? All right, I know it's more than 50. What's the correct answer, Dan? There you go. So that was quite impressive. I didn't know that about Dan until he shared that right before his message. OK, and then the last quiz question is, when was the last time you heard someone talk about hell in church? Well, we're going to talk about that today, so we're going to change that, okay? So chances are, uh, when we talk about the topic of hell, there's two extremes, all right? And you might fall in between one of these two extremes, or you might be on the extreme end. So on one end, we have uh, universalism. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but universalism is the belief that God is so good, God is so loving, that there's no such thing as hell, that he saved everybody. And guess what? All of us, we're going to go to heaven. So you have that one side, and maybe some of you believe that, you know, everyone's going to be saved, everyone's going to go to heaven. The second side to it, or the opposite end, is that God is not loving, and God is not kind, and hell is a real place, and that's where he's going to burn people who are bad and evil. So that's the other extreme, okay, is the punishing point of view, and where does Seventh-day Adventists fall into? Where do we fall into? Somewhere in between, somewhere closer to one side or the other. That's what we are going to explore today. All right? How you see God or your views about who God is is going to affect the way that you view hell. So if you have a warped view about who God is, if you think he's evil, if you think he's just out to punish people, then guess what? That's what your views of hell are going to be. If you believe that God is love and kind, then that's also going to affect your views on what hell is all about. So I'm going to ask you guys this question. Is your religion fear-based or is it love-based? I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds to think about that. Is your religion based on fear or is it based on love? All right? So when we talk about this, we have to address the elephant that is in the room. And that elephant is called sin. Are you guys aware of what sin is? Have you heard of that word before? If you're a Christian, you probably have heard of that. And that's going to affect what we're going to be talking about today. So how many of you guys have ever heard of the words, the great controversy? All right. So if you've attended our church for a while, you'll know that the great controversy is the battle between good versus evil, between Jesus versus Satan. And who wins the great controversy? Is it something, is it like yin yang where it's, it's always even, sometimes God wins, sometimes the devil wins? Is that what the great controversy is about? The great controversy is about Jesus having victory. And guess what? You and I can have a part of that victory. So we're going to start our first verse. is going to be in Revelation chapter 12. All right? So where did I tell you to go to? 
Revelation. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? That's in the New Testament. Now, some of our young people, I gave them a task, so I know that they're paying attention to our sermon. So this is the verse that's going to be in the New Testament. And what is the topic going to be? I heard Steve say it. War. War. All right, when you get there, say amen. amen. If you need time, ask for mercy. Revelation chapter 12. And where are we going to start? We're going to start in verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, starting in verse 7. And it says, I'm using New King James, and war broke out where? In heaven. Now, we're familiar with wars that happen here on earth, right? Um, in other countries, our own country, even in our own area, right? There's a place in, in Albuquerque called the war zone. This one is taking place in heaven, and it says, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Verse 9, so the great dragon was cast out, and if you don't know who the dragon is, here are some clues. The serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And we're going to skip to verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great, what? Wrath. Wrath. Why? Because he knows that he has, what? A short time. So the great controversy is the battle between good and evil. And it comes to earth. But it begins where? In heaven. And now it's being brought to planet earth. And this is why we are experiencing what we are experiencing. But it began in heaven. And in Ezekiel, we'll just pull it up on the slide. Ezekiel chapter 28. We get an insider on what's happening. So starting in verse 12, it says, Thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. So whoever is being described here is being described as perfect. Give me another adjective. What does it say? Beauty and full of wisdom. Let's go to verse 13. And verse 13 says, you were in Eden. Now, who do we know was in Eden? There's several characters, right? The garden of God, every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, the diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels. Some people will say that's right here. Your pipes, the way you're able to sing. Prepared for you on the day that you were created. Verse 14. You were the anointed cherub. What is a cherub? An angel who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stone. Verse 15. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin, wickedness, evil was found in you. Verse 16, a couple more verses. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. And verse, six, uh, excuse me, verse 17 tells us, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. What did we read about earlier? That this creature was full of beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. And if we were to look up Isaiah 14, that's not one of the verses I chose today. But it tells us that that's none other than who? Lucifer. Lucifer. Lucifer was created perfect, yet sin was developed in Lucifer. How is that possible? Well, we find the same thing happening when the war moves to planet Earth. So this one I want us to look up. So in your Bibles, let's go to the Old Testament. We went from one end, from Revelation. Now we're going to go to the other end of the Bible. Let's go to Genesis. What chapter do you think we're going to go to? If you said one, you're close. If you said two, you're hotter. If you said three, that's the correct chapter. Let's go to Genesis chapter three. Are you all aware of the story of Adam and Eve? And how 
uh, sin came to be. So we're actually going to skip that part, okay? Um, I think I have a picture, Anna, of the Garden of Eden and the serpent, okay? So we'll put that up. So you can use your imagination of what's happening between the three characters involved, right? You have Adam, you have Eve, and you have the serpent of old, also known as the devil or the dragon or Lucifer, now, we're going to skip, we're going to go past the fall story, and we're going to talk about the results of what happened. So Genesis chapter 3, let's go to verse 8. Are you there? Amen? Anybody need mercy? All right. It says, and they heard, who's they? Adam and Eve. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Now let's pause here for a second before we go to the next verse. This is right after they ate the fruit that they were not supposed to, right? This is the first disobedience on planet Earth. Did God change his character? Yes or no? No. So what changed? Adam and Eve's DNA changed, right? Because up until this time... It seems to me that they were seeing God on a regular basis. But after they sinned, what happens? Now we see themselves hiding from the presence of God in the garden. How many of you were paying attention to the children's story? All right. So I'm going to connect what we're talking about to the children's story. Because Tyler was talking about how he did something messed up. Right? And he was afraid. Okay? Because he did wrong. And I believe that that's what happens when we sin or when we do something that we know we're not supposed to do what is the result the result is fear right oh man i'm gonna get caught i'm gonna get in trouble but see without sin you wouldn't have that feeling but because we have sin you have that feeling right and you can see this from a young age even when kids are little babies like um levi he's still little and when he's doing something he's not supposed to like pooping all right there's tells. What do, what do I see? He'll go into a corner, and he'll be really quiet. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know? And I check his pants. Oh, man, he did something he wasn't supposed to do, right? But why is he hiding in the corner? Because he's feeling shame. He's feeling fear, right? This is not a natural feeling. So even at a young age, we are already experiencing this. And as we get older, it's still the same feeling, but the stakes are higher. Right? All right, so let's go to verse 9. And it says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Is God someone to fear or to be afraid of? Not the kind where fear God and give glory to him. That's more like respect. This is talking about being frightened of God. Is God some being that we should be frightened of. So at the beginning, I asked you guys, your viewpoint on God will affect your viewpoint on hell. So if you believe that God is loving and kind, then there is no reason to be afraid of who God is. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it tells us that, do we need to be afraid of God? It says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Verse 19, we love because he, and that actually should be a capital H. Who loved us first? God loved us first, right? I don't know how many of you are into movies or books, but I was looking up lists of villains, okay? We can put up that picture, and some of you might recognize picture of villains, whether it's in books, whether it's in movies, but they all have something in common. Either they want to take over the world, they want $50 million, right? Or they want everybody to worship or serve them, right? We even see that in the Bible with Pharaoh. What did he want? He wanted the, the, um, the Israelites, right? He enslaved them, right? Dr. Evil, he wants to take over the world. But they will usually do this in the form of force, violence, killing, bullying, hurting. 
And that's a result of sin. They want people to be afraid of them because if there's one thing that they want, it's for people to do what they want, but not based out of love, but based out of what? Based out of fear. And usually there is no choice involved. And that's why with God, it's different because God gives us the choice. He doesn't want us to love out of fear. He wants us to love because of choice. Those of you who are parents here, and maybe your parent is in the audience, or maybe your kid is in the audience. How would you feel, and maybe I'm talking to the ones who are still younger, how would you feel if your kid did things at home, around the house, because they were afraid of you? Is that love? And then as you get older, those of you who send Christmas cards, or Father's Day cards, or Mother's Day cards to your parents, do you do it because you're afraid of them? Or you're afraid of what they're going to say to you or do to you because you don't send that card? No. Why do you send it to them? Because you love them. You care about it. And it can reciprocate the other way around to your kids, to your parents, to your siblings, to anybody who you love. The difference is it's love-based and it's not fear-based. Are you with me? So that's why 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. So when it comes to God, we shouldn't have to fear. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think God was surprised when Adam and Eve sinned? Do you think it caught him off guard? Oh, shoot, what happened? They just sinned? Man, I need a plan B. If you read the book Patriarchs and Prophets by Ellen White, she seems to hint that God knew what was going to happen because God doesn't get surprised. And there was already a plan in place. And that's why when Genesis happened, we see later on where we see the proto-evangelion or the very first gospel message that there is hope, right? With the serpent and the woman. The serpent will attack the woman's heel, but the woman would crush the serpent's head. So that alone already tells us that God had a plan in place, but we already knew how it's going to play out. See, God could have just wiped out Adam and Eve, right? He could have just wiped out Lucifer. But then he would take away the ability to choose. Can you imagine if your kids did something bad and you could wipe them out? How many of you would take that offer? Put your hands down, okay? <laughs> no, nobody raised their hand, all right? Just kidding. All right? No, of course not. Why? Because we love them. If every time our kids messed up, we could just wipe them from memory from the face of the earth, would that really be love? And the answer is no. Now, uh, some of you guys already know this, and I believe I have a picture up. It's a picture of Samuel and Zyla. So Samuel's a twin, and Zyla was our daughter who passed away in 2016. And sometimes I get this question. It's like, what if Zyla had not been born? then you wouldn't have had to have a funeral. You wouldn't have had to experience heartache that I still feel to this day. You wouldn't be sad. So if you could go back in time, would you take that offer? And my answer is no. Because I would go through that heartache again if I knew that I could hold her and be with her again. And so no. I would not wish that I had never known her or she never existed. Now that's my human thinking. And we can only get a glimpse of how God thinks. So can you imagine if God says, you know, I'm just going to wipe out Adam and Eve, start all over again. No memory of them. Would that be love? And just guessing, but I don't think that would be love, right? In John 3, 16, you guys know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. See, this is love personified. God loved us so much that he said, I'm going to send Jesus. Not only that, but Jesus is going to give you a choice. You can choose life, or you can choose not have eternal life. Because God is about giving us the ability to choose. Let's look up a verse in Matthew 5, and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of it talking about hell, all right? We're moving on. I think I've established that God is love, yes? And that God gives us the ability to choose. 
You got, okay? All right, so we're going to go down. Let's talk about actual hell. All right, we're going to answer the questions. Is hell a real place? When is it going to happen? Is it happening right now? Is it deep in the depths of the earth? Who's involved? So who, what, when, where, why, and how? We're going to try to answer most of those questions today. But before we do that, let's go to Matthew chapter 25. So back in the New Testament. All right. Who wrote Matthew? You know this. Levi, right? Levi Matthew. All right. That's his other name. Chapter 25. I think on the slide I might have 26. I apologize. All right. Matthew chapter 25. And what's interesting is we're towards the end of Matthew, so you know that Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. But all of the stories that Jesus is telling up to that point is either related to end times. Those of you who are filling out the homework that I asked you to do, end times, all right? Related to the second coming. Related to what do we need to do to be ready? So in Matthew chapter 26, let's start in verse 41. Sorry, Matt. I said Matthew 25, and I started reading Matthew 26. All right, Matthew 25 verse 41. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed, into the, what are those words? Everlasting fire. There it is. Prepared for who? Prepared for Dale? For Paul? For Taylor? For Baboy? For Denise? Who is it prepared for? For the devil and his angels. So guess what? God has an agenda, but on his agenda, you're not supposed to be in hell. Do you guys see that? All right? So when we see these images, pull up the Lego image, Anna. When we see these images of the devil being in charge of hell, is that accurate or inaccurate? Is the devil in charge of hell? What did we just read? Who is hell prepared for? For the devil and his angels. So when we see these cartoons and movies where someone is in hell and the devil is there with his pitchfork and his horns and his tail and he's color red, where do we even get that, right? We have wild imaginations. But according to the Bible, he's not in charge of hell, right? It's prepared for who? The devil and his angels. That's what the agenda is. All right, so let's answer the question, other questions. When, where, why, how? We're going to stay in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 13. And then we're going to start wrapping up. Matthew 13. And we're going to go to verse 37. Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. Now, as you're making your way there, Matthew 13, there's a parable. And it's about, a parable is a story, in case you didn't know. It's a story about a field. All right, we're going to skip that. All right, we're going to go straight to Jesus explaining what that story means. Because each part, each character, each element in the story has deeper meaning. And Jesus is going to give that to us. So, Matthew 13, are you there? Amens? Or mercies? No? All right, Matthew 13, let's go to verse 37. Uh, right before that, it says, explain to us the parable of the tares, weeds, all right, of the field. Verse 37, he answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is who? The son of man. Who is the son of man? It's another name for Jesus. Okay? So right now, Jesus is sowing seeds in your heart. So when we see someone make the decision to accept Jesus and they get baptized, that's not because of me. That's not because of the person who is doing Bible studies. All right? That helps. But conviction comes from who? Jesus, right? So let's go to verse 38. And then it says, the field is what? The world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the weeds are the sons of the wicked. So my question is, are you a son or daughter of the kingdom, or are you a son or daughter of the wicked one? And guess what? You have the ability to choose. All right? We are all in this field, and the field is the world. Let's go to verse 39. 
The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is when? When? This is very important. Is it right now? Are we doing harvesting right now? No, it's too cold outside, right? No, but talking about the story, it's not right now. It's at the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Verse 40. Therefore, as the tares or weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Verse 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness. And then verse 42. And will cast them where? into the furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. All right, so let's put it all together. Based on the parable or the story Jesus told, and we're using our wisdom and deductive reasoning, when will this event take place? At the end of the age. So is hell happening right now? No. Where is it happening? We talked about it at the beginning. The story is about the field. What is the field? Is it deep underneath the plates of the earth? No, it's just the world. So it's right here on planet earth. It's not some imaginary uh, kingdom where there's fire and, 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 you know, lava. The Bible says that it's right here on earth, but it's not happening right now. And who is involved? Who decides who goes to heaven or who goes to hell? Who decides? You do. All of us do. Right? The choice is up to us. Who are we going to accept? Jesus? Or are we going to accept Satan? So we've answered who, what, when, where, why, and then how is this is my favorite part. All right? Actually, I'm going to ask an important question before we do that. Why do movies, cartoons, churches even, teach us that when you die, you go straight to heaven or you go straight to hell? When we just looked at verses that it's not happening right now. There's a verse that I didn't include in 1 Thessalonians that tells us that when Jesus comes, who's going to be resurrected? The good, right? The dead. Now, if I died and I went straight to heaven, what would be the point of being resurrected if I'm already where I'm supposed to be? So my question is, why do movies, cartoons, some churches teach us this? Revelation 12 tells us that the devil knows that he has what? A short time. And if he can get you to be confused about what you believe in, then that's a win for him. If he can confuse the world and deceive the world and thinking, you know what? Once I die, that's when I get my reward or punishment. But also, it's because it's fear-based. Are you with me? And we use it to scare people. Well, if you are a bad person, if you do this, you're going to burn in hell. And that's fear-based, when instead it should be love-based. And it's like, man, what an opportunity to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven forever. Do you see the difference between love-based and fear-based? And so we're going to close with this, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. We talked about how hell's going to be on earth. But does that fire keep on burning? Is it a fire that burns forever and ever? Because if it does burn forever and ever, then this next verse does not make sense. And the Bible is all mixed up, right? Revelation 21, verse 1 says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Wow. For the earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there was no more sea. Verse 2, then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Do you see this? God wants nothing more than to be with us. And the question is, do we want to be with God? Right? God himself will be with them and be their God. And then verse 4, one of my favorite verses of all time. 
God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. See, the purpose of hell is not only to get rid of evil, wickedness, but it's also to make the earth new once again. Because the Bible tells us that the new Jerusalem, God's headquarters, is going to be where? Right here on earth after it's been cleansed. And he is expecting you and I to be there. But the question is, what is our decision going to be? So here's the end game. Here's the end game. And then our praise team, you guys can start walking up. Is your relationship with God, is it based on fear? Or is it based on love? And my prayer is that here it's not going to be based on fear. But it's going to be based on love. Because Jesus already paid the price for us to have salvation. Where? In heaven. We're not even going to say the other word anymore. Jesus has defeated death. Jesus has defe defeated evil. Jesus has defeated hell. And that's why Jesus is our champion. Repeat after me. Jesus is our champion. Jesus is our champion. Amen. All right, let's listen to our closing song. Our closing song is going to be um, Champion. If you've heard it, you're welcome to sing along. I've tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it Do you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it You take the broken things And raise them to glory my 
breaking now, I have the authority. Jesus has given me. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone.